Hello, everyone. I want to do a video on uh, the Arthur criticism of Singer's um, essay. Uh, you know, this is a quite an interesting criticism, I think. And one of the things that I said, and I sort of, in our last session, our last live session, is that I thought that there was something hopeless about Singer's approach to ethics as a utilitarian. And I, that was a loose thing. I should never have said that. But I do think there's some truth into it, uh, tr truth about it. One of the th things I also said is that his utilitarianism was a blunt instrument. I think that those criticisms on my part are in line with what Arthur says in a much more intelligent and justified way. If this is a criticism, his uh, his response to the singer here, what's it called? Moral World Hunger, the case against Singer. It is certainly not a dismissal of, of Singer's position. Uh, he more or less accepts that Singer's reasoning about our obligations to others is a, a real part of our moral outlook and that it's, it's valid on its own terms. It's just incomplete, I would say. The overall message I get from Arthur's criticism is that Singer is right as far as he, it goes, but that he ignores some things. And this is uh, important to point out. And what he, what he ignores is that there are other considerations that are not utilitarian, that is, that are not consequentialist in Singer's uh, you know, way, uh, that there are other considerations which are also important and need to be kept in mind when making moral decisions. Uh, after reviewing the singer position and coming to the drowning child scenario, uh, which he calls uh, the greater moral evil rule, uh, singer, um, I mean, uh, Arthur uh, pretty much shows that he agrees with a lot of what singer is saying, and especially this idea of equality of interest that he mentions here at the top of page 848. Um, but uh, then in the second part of the essay, Rights and Dessert, begins to outline some of the things that he thinks that Singer misses, and those are uh, rights and dessert or rights and entitlement. And in a very strong and, I don't know, sort of startling um, passage here at the bottom of page 848, top of page 849, uh, in, in the bluntest possible way, he shows the limits of the greater moral evil uh, principle. That is, if the greater moral evil principle is what he says it is, or is what Singer says it is, um, which is right here, if it is in our power to prevent something bad from happening, without thereby sacrificing anything of comparable moral importance, we ought morally to do it. In these the examples here uh, of giving up a part of your body or granting somebody sexual favors in order to prevent a, a greater harm, uh, he shows the absurdity of that rule taken to its extremes. That is, if, if we could... Do we have a, a moral obligation to give up a kidney to somebody or an eye if they, that would prevent them from suffering a greater harm than our loss of those things? Um, Singer's rule seems to say, yes, we have an obligation. If we could prevent somebody from doing a greater harm by granting them a sexual favor, now, of course, that would mean a harm to us, but it might prevent conceivably a greater harm to somebody else by us doing it. Should we do it? Well, Singer's principle seems to say that we should or we have an obligation to do it. But this is absurd. Uh, as he says here, if anything is clear, it is that our code does not require such heroism. And he's, he's absolutely right about that. And, and I think Singer would have to. I don't know how Singer would respond to that. Interesting if he has a retort to to Arthur there, but uh, I think that that's pretty strong. That is, if Singer's mo greater moral evil principle actually does imply that we would need to do such things morally 
give up parts of our bodies, grant somebody a sexual favor in order to prevent a greater harm, then that shows that there's a real problem with the greater moral evil rule. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I don't think that he is in any way, Arthur is in any way concerned or is does, does not intend to completely dispense with the greater moral evil rule. I think that he he admits that it is a real part of our morality, a necessary part of our morality, and that you really should stop and help the kid who is drowning in the shallow pool, even though it will get your clothes muddy. Everyone would say that. However, there are other considerations that we also have to bring into account, and those are what he calls rights and desert, or rights and entitlement. Um, his uh, division between uh, negative and positive rights is uh, important in that um, he's going to concentrate on positive rights. And negative rights are ones you're one you, ones that you're born with, and they're largely rights of non-interference. The um, the right to life is the right not to be killed. The the right to free speech is the right not to have your speech uh, censored by anybody or suppressed by anybody. But those are rights to non-interference. They are not rights to things. Uh, if if somebody says I have a right to your kidney because I need it more than you, that's a positive right. And uh, Arthur is concerned with the limits of that. Uh, as he says, uh, at the bottom of page 49, normally then a duty to help a stranger in need is not the result of a right he has. Such a right would be positive. And since no contract or promise was made, no such right exists. So uh, positive rights have to be, are, are not natural. They're not things that we're born with. They're things that were, were created by commitments that we make to each other. Um, so if we say that the person who's starving on the other side of the world has a right to some of our wealth, um, that is to, that raises the question of how they gain that right, what kind of commitment has actually been made. Uh, so that, I think that questions the whole basis of, of Singer's essay. Um, he also brings up dessert. The idea that people, um, you know, uh, in certain cases, that the demand that somebody give might be, uh, might raise issues of dessert. He, he gives the example of the industrious farmer and the lazy farmer. Uh, but I think that he, he's not dismissing Singer's position here. He's just tempering it. He's limiting it. As he says, the last paragraph on page 850, our moral code gives weight to both the greater moral evil principle and entitlements. So what he, I think he's saying is that the way that we actually go about morality demands that we have, we give consideration to the kind of purely utilitarian consequentialist equality of interest arguments that, that, that Singer presents, but that sometimes these things are defeated by um, rights and desert. That is, um, it, it, it has, it is the case that in some cases, uh, such considerations would override the purely consequentialist or utilitarian arguments that, that Singer, uh, that Singer presents, that they're not the whole story. Um, now, one of the things he says is that, well, maybe Singer is saying that they should be the whole story, that we should get rid of um, these other considerations, that he's kind of a revolutionary Singer. Or as he says here, uh, Singer can perhaps be seen best, best be seen as a moral reformer, advocating the rejection of rules which provide for distribution according to rights and desert. And that may be true, as I think Singer might say that, that these other considerations need to be wiped out in favor of um, uh, the kind of purely consequentialist ones that, that he's dealing with. Uh, but one of the things that Arthur says is that, well, I mean, these, the, these considerations of rights and desserts are a reflection of a more fundamental uh, consideration of what he calls uh, 
justice and respect. Uh, fair, or he says fairness, justice, and respect, which are deeply embedded in the way that we go about the world, go about in the world, dealing with the world, dealing with each other, that if something we consider something to be unfair or uh, something to um, be unjust or something, and that lack of respect thing should ring a bell uh, as far as Kant goes, for instance, say, say the uh, granting of somebody, this crazy idea of granting somebody a sexual favor to, to prevent greater harm, Kant would rule that out on the basis of the second categorical imperative, right? Because you would be disrespecting yourself. You would be using yourself or allowing yourself to be used for the purposes of some end instead of treating yourself like an end in, in, in yourself. Uh, I think of what one of the things that Arthur is saying here is that we would probably hesitate to give up those kind of values for the sake of the purely consequentialist, purely practical, purely utilitarian approach that Singer uh, advocates. So what is his final uh, position here, or his final comment at the end? Arthur says, it seems to me then that a reasonable code would require people to help when there is no substantial cost to themselves. And so you do, our code of ethics would require that in, in cases like the, the, the child drowning in the shallow pool, since there are no substantial costs to yourself, that you, you're you required to help. Um, but that other considerations, uh, considerations of, uh, was, you know, fairness, justice, and respect, and the kind of rights and desserts that we say that we have as a result of the things that we do, would put limits on the kind of general obligation to help people in need. Um, he says, since most people's savings accounts and nearly everybody's second kidney are not insignificant, entitlements would in those cases outweigh another need, another's need. But if what is at stake is trivial, as dirtying one's clothes would normally be, then an ideal moral code would not allow rights to override the greater evil that can be prevented. Uh, and they said something interesting, despite our code's unclear and sometimes schizophrenic posture, it seems to me that these judgments are not that different from our current moral attitudes. Uh, you know, that, that is that, that we have to balance and make, make a judgment call on these matters. Yes, you do have an obligation to help people in need, especially when the costs of doing so are trivial, but other considerations come in. Um, property rights, rights to the integrity of your own body, what you deserve as a result of your own efforts, et cetera, that these other considerations do come in and they provide limit. They, they, they uh, provide limits for our obligations to others. And there are other considerations that need to be kept in mind, not just the pure need, the relative need of the person who's suffering and, and whatever we have. Other things definitely need to be kept in mind besides those purely consequentialist matters.